Thank you, Ravi, for sharing uh, this great message about three Elijahs. And uh, there's a lot to be informed about, and it's a great resource to go through and share with others. So now is the time to uh, chat, make your comments, and uh, feel free to ask any questions regarding this topic or any other topic. Uh, thank you, Robbie, for that uh, excellent presentation on three Elijahs. Uh, only on Friday, some of a uh, couple of our Sunday pastors from our uh, prophecy seminar, they were asking about uh, this portion passage in Malachi about this Elijah, uh, second Elijah and uh, the, the end time Elijah and, and then relation with the law of God. It was told there the law of Moses in Malachi. Uh, so they were asking about that. So thank you so much for that excellent presentation for the enormous time and efforts you have taken in preparing these graphics and uh, material in an excellent way arranged it. I feel that uh, everything is in perfect harmony with the Bible and the prophecy, in time prophecies of Daniel and Revelation and uh, the spirit of prophecy. Uh, I wish that uh, this material can be translated into Telugu and be posted in YouTube or if you have a website uh, that can be posted in website. So millions of uh, Telugu people all around the world, they can have access uh, to this. <clears throat> so my uh, just uh, a point, a couple of points is uh, 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 the, uh, the political system uh, during the time of Elijah, uh, the Ahab and uh, Jewish people, unconverted Jewish people and uh, Jezebel and the false prophets. Uh, it seems that uh, the whole uh, uh, power, the whole political powers, uh, the sway is very powerful. Satan rallied uh, the entire, uh, their known uh, kingdom against one person, uh, God's representative Elijah uh, and then but at last uh, uh, God's representative one person prevailed and then uh, God's purpose was done. So it's the same case uh, uh, during the time of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was one and uh, Jewish people, Romans and uh, Herod Herodias and uh, her daughter and the entire uh, kingdom was rallied by Satan against uh, John the Baptist. But John the Baptist uh, prevailed at the end, uh, one person, minority. So it's the same case uh, uh, in at the end time. So the end time saints, the uh, end time saints, uh, are a few, but the entire world, the two beasts of Revelation 13, first beast, uh, the papal power, in influencing the entire world, political kingdoms of the world, and then uh, using uh, the second beast, uh, United States of America, rallying the entire uh, world of the present age. Uh, against uh, a small minority of the faithful few of uh, God's people. But God's people who will be filled with the Holy Spirit and the power of heaven will prevail and then uh, get uh, the message, uh, the final, give the final warning message to the entire world and will stand true to the Lord 
and uh, be ready for his uh, kingdom uh, so uh, at last god god will triumph and his truth will tri triumph and uh, all the others uh, just uh, fall apart uh, so powerless though the majority the entire world is on satan's side uh, it will fall apart before uh, when god intervenes along with this uh, faithful few so uh, my question is uh, you said the third elijah is uh, the seventh day adventist church uh, will it constitute all the i didn't, I didn't say church i didn't say church don't misquote me uh, <laughs> i said seven day adventist yeah seventh day adventist yeah, yeah so seventh don't don't adventist. add don't add to what i said yeah yeah i mean the seventh day adventists uh, are in the church no they are not no, in the church no the final message is for people okay so it, it is in the church but we are we are talking as for the whole, the message is for the whole world so yeah yeah we, we but, should uh, not use are, we should not we should be wise as serpents and harmless as doves that's the key no where are these seventh day adventists they they constitute as a church no end time church no doubt about that but we we should know how to present the gospel that's what i'm trying to point out yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that i recognize i agree yeah, with you that's all i'm trying to point <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm not so against please, the church yeah. i'm not against the church i'm trying to say how the gospel is presented to people out there yeah yeah so it is like we'll snatching just just to sorry just to finish that off to say it is like people are already accusing we are snatching people from church to church no? so that is not the gospel the gospel is to go to every nation mm. kindred tongue prepare for jesus coming so we should not mm. say this is the church uh, come to this church and everybody should become seven day adventists that's all it is that's the mm. gospel yeah 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 that's true <laughs> uh, we highlight the truth rather than yeah. a group <laughs> that, that's it yeah yeah not so, the group <laughs> yeah yeah not the group <laughs> so the seventh day adventists uh, uh the third uh, how many of the seventh day adventists constitute the third elijah uh, is it all the seventh day adventists baptized seventh day adventists with the end time truth uh, or the faithful few in this because ellen white says the vast majority are steeped in uh, the world pleasure and position the vast majority are steeped in that and then god is going to shake and sift uh, these people in these closing movement uh, at the later rain and uh, the vast majority are going to be sifted out and the faithful few are going to remain so are these the are you referring to these faithful few Uh, on whom god uh, reigns the latter reign of the holy spirit and then uh, they'll be instrumental in uh, finishing god's uh, work in these uh, last days uh, having uh, having the true repentance true uh, the forgiveness of god and uh, they are sanctified people they're filled with the holy spirit and have a constant uh, continuous connection with heaven uh, the source of uh, power and then uh, uh, they are the ones uh, who will finish the work or uh, uh, will most uh, how about this uh, most uh, professing uh, seventh day adventists uh, okay i don't know <laughs> okay you okay know. we'll we'll pause we'll pause there if you have more we'll continue but let's yeah, pause yeah. there before, before i forget uh, what okay. you're trying to ask so um, uh, thank you very much for what you said uh, as introduction and uh, want to praise god and all glory and honor be to him but uh, i think the spirit is moving because you already had the questions on friday on the same topic so by the grace of god here we have more information if you did not have it uh, first hand we praise god for that so now talking about the seven day adventists um, the seven day adventists movement okay yeah, i like to use the word movement that's how we were referred to in the early times and now we have established ourselves as church like other churches and therefore we are churched and we are not moving you, you understand what i'm saying 
Yeah, yeah. Yes. We, we are churched now and we are not moving. That is why I don't like to use the word church. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? We yeah, are a yeah, movement. Yeah. We are a movement. Yeah. Seventh Advent started as a movement and we are meant to move with the message. So move yeah. the message to the whole world. But mm. we are not. We are, we are preaching to the preached, meaning we are churched in the church. So in the church, we are preaching to the church and that's all we are doing. We are not moving out. The commission is to go out. The three angels message, which is the Elijah message given to the last third Elijah, is to go ye therefore and teach all nations. Yeah, and Matthew 24, 14, the sign of Jesus coming. The gospel is to be preached to all the world as a witness and then shall the end come. So yes. that is not happening. So yes. the people who take this message are going to be the Elijahs. So yes. now how will you take this message? Is everybody going to preach? No, everybody can't preach. That's not yes. the gift of the spirits. Uh, there are different gifts given. Mm. Uh, we're, not, we're not going to go there. Everybody knows there are different gifts that the Holy Spirit has given people. And that's why the parable, uh, Matthew 25, is a very good example of the coming. All those three parables represent the second coming of Jesus Christ. The ten virgins having the Holy Spirit. And then you have the parable of the talents and the sheep and the goats. So all of these are telling us what we ought to be. So now the people who are preaching, because Matthew 24, 14, we need to understand this very clearly. The third Elijah People need to understand this very clearly. Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness. And then shall the end come. So people need to see the gospel more than hear the gospel. You understand what I'm saying? Sir? Mm -hmm. The yeah. people have to see the gospel, then hear the gospel. So people there has to be front runners the Elijah should be doing something for people to see that is their life and that is what the statement <laughs> says there's a nice statement that um, um, i hear from time to time and i use as well preach all the time if necessary use words mm -hmm. preach all mm -hmm. the time if necessary use words meaning your life why do you eat different why do you drink different? Why do you go different? Why do you dress different? First Corinthians 10 31. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do it all to the glory of God. That is the witness that God wants this Elijah people to be. But we are adopting the things of this world and we take the three angels' message. Who wants to hear you? Nobody. People don't want to hear you. Shall I tell you a testimony? One testimony, yeah, yeah, yeah. this one pastor who is a secretary of uh, the churches of um, India, he said to me, you know why I'm impressed to broadcast the messages that God is giving through you on the state television in Andhra Pradesh? You know why? He told me why. He said, because I saw the spirit of the Lord in your, what did you see me? I was doing seminar in a city for one day standing there and preaching that means he saw something more than the preaching you understand what i'm saying he saw something more than the preaching that is why he says i'm seeing that you're led by the spirit you are living by the spirit and you're following the spirit that is why i want your messages to be broadcast people have to see something different about this elijah people you don't have to be preaching with your mouth and those who live according to what the Spirit has revealed to us as a people. And in your presentation, you have seen, and it starts with reformation in our lives. If we are not reformed, like Elijah of the first time, and like the John the Baptist, in our daily life, we are not his witnesses. And if we are not his witnesses, as you see in 1 Peter 2.9, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, called out of darkness into his marvelous light shoo forth the praises of him he doesn't say to preach shoo forth the praises people need to see the problem in seventh adventist church now i use is this people are not witnesses i'm not talking about jehovah witnesses i'm talking about being god's witnesses 
and we, our lifestyles, our action, how we dress, how we act, how we react, what we drink, what we eat is not a witness for majority of people. And therefore you can't talk. <clears throat> they don't want to hear you. There's nothing different about you they see. Why should they hear you? That is a problem. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I hope so, that so, covers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first Elijah uh, and the second Elijah, they dressed very simple and they ate a simple diet. That was the original diet that God gave to uh, Adam and Eve before the sin entered into this world. Uh, so, uh, can we say that uh, first Elijah and second Elijah uh, are the are the more representatives of uh, the end time uh, saints of God who will have the same uh, things. I mean, simple dress, simple diet. The simple diet means the original diet. Uh, That's right. And uh, the message of the obedience to the commandments of God, the three angels' message, and uh, the true worship and all. So, uh, should, uh, because why I'm asking this question is, some of our Sunday pastors in our seminars, they were asking, is this a big issue? Uh, how we dress and what we eat and all. Uh, I told him in these last days, it's an issue. Uh, they need to be special uh, in this, uh, uh, in the matters of dress and food and what we believe, uh, the end time truth and all <coughs> we should have. And some of them were even asking, is, should we have to accept seventh day Sabbath in order to be part of uh, these people uh, who will be translated to heaven at second coming? Uh, as part of uh, the last uh, end time saints of God. So, uh, what do you, how do you answer these uh, people? Okay, so let us start with, uh, I already mentioned half of it, like 1 Corinthians 10 31. So, they're mainly, mainly non Adventists uh, beat around the uh, conversations or discussions based on Paul's writings. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what they quote from. So, uh, like Jesus, we um, answer them with questions. So, Paul's own writings, 1 Corinthians 10 31, I gave, and then Romans 12 1, all of these. Know ye not that ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost, and if the temple, if this temple is destroyed, God will destroy. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. that's again sanctuary language. So, what you put in this temple of God matters. What you put on it, in it, and what you do with this temple, everything matters. So, uh, what you eat, what you drink, everything matters. And um, the, the examples, okay, since we are quoting about the three Elijahs, the first two Elijahs, their examples are examples for us. If you want the examples, if you don't want examples, the instruction is there for us. In the word of God. And um, again, uh, third uh, testimony, I already told First Peter 2.9. That is also key. And Sabbath, Sabbath is key. Not just Sabbath only. Sabbath is going to be a crucial test, but the commandments is key. They said the uh, commandments of Moses, you, you referred to in the previous uh, statement when you said before, uh, when, when you started the first conversation, mm. because Malachi chapter 4 refers to the commandments of Moses. It's only referred to the commandments of Moses because Moses brought it down. And not only Moses brought it down, the first time God himself wrote with his own finger, that's Exodus 31 verse 18, he wrote with his own finger. But that one, what he brought down, what were they doing then? They were worshipping the golden calf. And Moses, being a human being, was angry and he broke the stones. And the second time, he was asked to write. Second time, he was asked to write and he was given to, uh, given to them. So when it refers to Moses' law, it does not mean that uh, Moses wrote it himself out of nowhere. It is a copy of the original that God himself wrote, which Moses broke. I mean, lit, not broke them uh, by breaking the commandments, but broke the tables of stone. 
and these commandments and uh, in the in that is why we need to realize in jeremiah it's prophesied that he'll write in our hearts and in hebrews chapter 8 and verse 10 it says that he wrote on our hearts the new covenant still the commandments so if you don't keep the commandments if you disregard the commandments like james 2 10 says if you keep the whole law offered in one you're guilty of all so for seven day adventists now the caution is you can keep the sabbath to the perfect test possible by any human being and uh, break any other one you're not going when jesus comes the same applies to anybody you break one you've broken all so it, it, you have to, people all should understand the whole big picture people think uh, once you meet jesus you're justified and you're saved and you'll be glorified no it's not that easy for the people that have the privilege of going alive with jesus no no people will have to make a choice because right now we live people need to understand even in the bible in its context the whole bible in its context as an overview the bible is a genealogy book genesis 1 talks about how man came into existence how god created and since then what happened and right now we live in revelation 12 13 and 14 that's where we live real time the next events to happen is the rest of revelation 14 revelation 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 those are the events to happen in their respective chronology people need to understand that too mm. and we are living in that time so you have to multi dimension dimensional <laughs> aspects are there for people to understand the times we are in mm. <clears throat> Certainly. Uh, thank you so much for those answers. One last one, that is, uh, uh, many, I mean, leave alone the worldly, uh, the non-Christians in the world, uh, billions of uh, non-Christians in the world, and millions of uh, uh, non-Adventists in the world. But the Adventists, uh, who know the health reformation message, uh, many of them are, I don't know about your situation in England. Uh, I don't know about the situation in other parts of the world, but in India, uh, most of the seventh, uh, most of the Adventists that I know uh, are not vegetarians. Uh, I mean, I'm not criticizing, fault-finding, or judging, but uh, the health message in the context of uh, first Elijah, second Elijah, and the example of uh, Daniel and his three friends. Uh, so turning to the original diet, uh, the diet that God gave before sin entered into this world, and very soon we are going to enter into a world where there is not going to be sin, there's not going to be flesh eating there uh, in, in that sinless world, uh, heaven. Uh, so uh, we cannot change at the coming of Jesus uh, or at resurrection. Uh, we are going to change here only and give up uh, that uh, diet, especially Ellen White, I remember uh, saying, uh, the end time saints are not going to allow a morsel of flesh to poison the course of their stomach, people who are uh, preparing to be translated to heaven. So this is the first test in the ladder of our salvation experience. And if we fail in this, we're going to fail in more over this flesh eating. You're not going to have victory over anything else that is concerned to salvation. Uh, so, uh, most, uh, many of our uh, so-called Adventists uh, in India, uh, they say that it's not a big matter, it's not a big issue uh, where to be a vegetarian and uh, to have uh, this original diet and all that. So, what do you feel about it? Okay, you, you answered all the questions, but let me say my comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, so following through on that, um, in my last presentation, uh, I think I quoted the Christian service page 41. Uh, mm. Christian service page 41 uh, identifies that um, not one in 20, quoting to Seventh-day Adventist church now, baptized Seventh-day Adventists whose names are written in the books of the church, not one in 20 is preparing for Jesus coming. Um, and that makes, if you make it percentages, it becomes 95%. And you rightly said, majority, most uh, Seventh-day Adventists in India, and I want to say I probably all over the world, uh, where, where the few countries that I've been to, by the grace of God, I've seen uh, is the same case. There's nothing much different around the world to what is happening in India in terms of diet. So, yeah, uh, maybe 95% are still eating meat. Um, and maybe they did not make that first step. So they're not progressing towards uh, preparing for Jesus coming physically. Mentally, maybe seven dead Adventists are very, very strong. Uh, they keep the Sabbath holy and uh, whatever comes with the Sabbath context. And that is why I said James 2.10 says, keep the whole law and offend in one, you're guilty of all. So we will fall short somewhere. And uh, God is going to... Uh, judge people based on the information given to them. Whether you have learned about it and wanted to know about it, it's a choice that people have to make. And majority of 720 is don't make the choice to study more and learn more. And majority of the preachers in 7th Adventism don't teach how to prepare for Jesus coming. What is the process of sanctification? Nothing is taught. Uh, even today, everything is taught. Love, grace, mercy, justice, and all the stories and parables and... Uh, gospel and even uh, Old Testament and stories and going to deep um, historical and uh, uh, I'm not saying we don't have to do that. We are doing ourselves. But the essence of everything is to prepare for Jesus come. If that is not touched in any topic that is being talked about, if that essence or that thought process is not coming, it's not preparing a people. The devil has deceived our preachers in Adventism. Unfortunately, majority. So our teachers, our preachers themselves have not received the message and the unction of the Holy Spirit to understand the gospel of how to prepare a people for Jesus coming. That is the biggest problem we face as a church. Majority don't teach and preach how to prepare. They said Jesus is coming. Yes, Jesus is coming, but you won't be there because you're not ready. That is the problem. And 95%, and if you read the spirit of prophecy, she says, um, countless people are going to leave when the shaking finally happens. When the final shaking, shaking is already happening, people are not liking what is being told and they stop coming to church and whatever and stop meeting people or stop listening to people or listening to their messages. When they're preaching, they go somewhere else and so many things are happening. But when the final shaking comes, the straight message of the Lord, thus said the Lord, is going to shake so many out, countless. I believe almost 95% will leave. The nominal seven day Adventists, and I want to say, this is my personal, my personal um, statement, to say that if they have not made that first step of changing the diet, they will not make it alive when Jesus comes to go with him. They will not. This is my personal statement. Based on the first sin that brought about the downfall of humanity. The, sec the second testimony in the Bible we have is the first sin that Satan tried to bring to Jesus, all food. That's where it begins. So the recovery from sin has to begin with food so that you can become pure and holy. So this is for seven Adventists. Mm -hmm. I know, I remember uh, I came along with you to a couple of sections uh, in India and you, you have gone to some union offices and all and uh, you found that uh, even the section leaders and the union leaders, leave alone the pastors and the members and all, they, I remember uh, those people coming and uh, placing fish and mutton and chicken and all before you. And I remember you saying that uh, it is uh, abomination to God, the end time <laughs> of God, <laughs> eating these uh, abomination to God and you are not ready 
for the latter rain you are not you are not worthy to have this entire message with you and then you just eat i'm leaving and all you i remember you leaving that place and going so from that time i was uh, very seriously thinking even at that time when you told that i was now and then eating uh, some uh, flesh food and all so i and my son in law and some of our family members took decision in that context uh, not to eat uh, non vegetarian we understood that serious implications of uh, this uh, original diet uh, that uh, first elijah second elijah daniel and his friends god put them as examples and powerful examples for the end time saints that it is uh, uh, it is not option but it is mandatory uh that uh, it's it's a it's a requirement from heaven that we turn to the vegetarian diet along with uh, obedience to the rest of the commandments and then uh, uh proclaiming the end time message of the three angels message and all uh, including the sabbath message not by our own power not by our own wisdom but Uh, by constantly continuously connecting ourselves with the with the power of heaven with the whole with the power of holy spirit and be transformed through his grace humbling ourselves before him every moment of every day throughout our life so yes. thank you so much for your powerful example so if uh, if uh, a few people are there the faithful few this is going to impact the entire india and entire world for that matter in each country and this gospel shall be preached in all the world and then shall the end come <laughs> so <laughs> including adventism okay so since uh, you brought this up let me say praise god and um, see the elijah the past to elijahs example is they went and stood before the kings and mm. told them that you are doing sin and you are leading your people into sin Mm. If, if that is what we see in the past to elijahs the literal yeah. elijah and john the baptist mm. and so today we technically don't have kings so the leaders and the pastors and all are, they are the kings so to speak in symbolic language so i praise god for sending me before uh, so many pastors and leaders and presidents of sections and uh, conferences and unions and uh, divisions and uh, Uh, god has sent me and i've uh, i have made this rebuke statements that people are not doing what they ought to do so god will raise up elijahs yeah. <laughs> the few the few the few yeah yeah right yeah. anyway thank you all so much and uh, god be with you all um, yeah god wants the third elijahs to stand up the third elijah stand up even if you're alone don't remember mount carmel experience elijah was alone physically physically one person against the whole nation of israel and the armies and the false prophets the jezebel brought and the king and the queen and everybody one man yeah. but we read that god said no he is not alone the whole host of heaven is with him that gives power and authority so when uh, i am able to stand up before people and say you you already said you were there so you know that incident that took place the union um, uh, president was there and section all the officers and president and everybody was there the conference everybody was there so god gives that unction of that power to say to people what is needed to be said when it's needed to be said so mm-hmm. you have to be led by the spirit and this is a, this is the testimony that people in the church have seen by the grace and glory of god and only to the glory of god people outside of the church are also seeing mm-hmm. the power of the holy spirit in one's life that is key mm-hmm. that is key as a testimony final testimony and while we are doing this let me also say the devil is going to attack yeah the devil is going to attack my my wife was under serious attack she was she had blood pressure went to 240 over 120 something and uh, uh, the devil wanted to take her but god says no 
my my mouthpiece needs a support <laughs> my mouthpiece needs support so uh, he has to <laughs> <laughs> so we are here so so it's not going to be easy persecution is going to come my own people uh, dislike me and persecute me but that's all right the bible says it will be done so i know the word of god i live by the word of god and so i am happy and uh, joyful i rejoice because uh, jesus is coming soon and i have this hope that uh, i will have a place reserved for me so be faithful that's the encouragement i want to give everybody be faithful make if you did not make the steps make the first step then the rest of the steps will be piece of cake mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay anand are you there okay uh so uh any other questions if there are more questions then we'll remain i will not play the end uh, uh music because this is being recorded and uh, it will be made uh, public later on just this uh, q and a portion which is the forum so uh, uh so brother elisha so do you have uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we are going to have some discussion on those. Yeah, and in that case, those who wish to leave can leave, of course, but the slide will remain the same. I will not play the music because when I play the end music, what's happening is, you know, that is showing in the morning, oh. uh, duration. So thank mm-hmm. you. And I know that you are very busy and you have to yeah. get in more witnessing. so that's fine and sure resume so thank thanks. you all thank you all so much and god be with you yeah thank you and uh, so we can continue with uh, the open forum feel free to ask any questions have we discussed about the uh, that portion on uh, galatians 4th chapter 8 to 10 okay uh, i did not go through the other texts that you gave me but uh, i think we can still uh, go through uh, those texts at least couple of texts uh, yeah, uh, galatians 4 8 to 10 and uh, Ephesians 2:15 to 16 and Colossians 2:14 to 17. Okay, let's uh, take one uh, text at a time. So mm-hmm. Galatians 8. This is uh, Galatians 4:8 8 to 10. 4:8 8 to 10. So let's deal with that first. 4:8 to 10. Uh, here it says i'm reading from the new king james version yeah the subtitle is or the title is fears for the church mm. then indeed when you did not know god you mm. still those which by nature are not gods mm that is verse number 8 <laughs> yeah but now after you have known god or rather are known by god how is it that you turn again to weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage number 10 is you observe days and months and seasons and years so i thought we went through this uh, mm-hmm. last week these verses uh, yeah yeah like okay something is yet not clear mm-hmm. well, what do you uh, i tr- i try to share some of uh, uh, your comments and uh, explanations with uh, some of our sunday pastors uh, they still they are so ingrained in that kind of a uh, uh, understanding that uh, the uh, 
the keeping of the law uh, or the keeping of the ceremonial law of Moses and even the keeping of uh, the Ten Commandments law, external uh, observances of the Ten Commandment law uh, are uh, referred to as, uh, they say, even on TV, most of the mega church pastors use uh, uh, those uh, ceremonial law of Moses and then the Ten Commandment uh, law of Moses, the external observances of the Ten Commandment, uh, uh, the observance of the Ten Commandments of the law of God, the moral law of God, are referred to as weak and beggarly elements and uh, they connect them to the days and months and seasons and years. So that's what they're so ingrained in that. And uh, but uh, as you said last time, that the context is very clear. That uh, the weak and the beggarly elements, all here in the context, is referring to the pagan gods and goddesses and the festivals uh, that are dedicated to those uh, uh, gods and goddesses. Uh, yeah, so if we, if we start with verse 8, it says again, but then mm -hmm. indeed when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are not gods. Mm -hmm. How did this yeah. <clears throat> That is a question that needs to be answered, which is, answered. are you mm -hmm. using the Bible to interpret itself? Mm. Or are you using the Bible to interpret what you may want to interpret because mm. if if the bible is going to be read then it has to be read on its own terms that means the bible shouldn't interpret the bible mm. understand the context we don't add or take away anything because mm. if keeping of the ten commandments is equated to weak and beggarly elements then we can again go through the Ten Commandments and, and say, okay, commandment number one, God is commanding mm. that should be worship, nobody else. Mm. He's doing that weak and beggarly. Mm. Truth cannot be self-contradictory as we already discussed. Mm. And uh, the other simple question I will ask them is, if you think that the Ten Commandments keeping is equal to being weak and uh, legalistic, how do you explain what Jesus said when he was asked, you know, a question? He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Mm. No commandments to keep, then everyone can do what they want. Why are you preaching sin? Okay, fine. If you think that Ten Commandments is uh, done away with, mm. then what are you preaching? You, you can ask them the simple question. What are you preaching? If mm. you're preaching repentance from sin, sin cannot be known unless there is a transgression. Of the law. Mm. You have to start with the definition of sin. You, you can ask uh, anyone who's still resisting uh, uh, the keeping of Ten Commandments or the commandments as being still valid is do you understand what sin is? Yeah, yeah. Sin is what? If, if the Ten Commandments are taken away, okay, for the sake of argument. What remains? Mm -hmm. Why are you going to church on Sunday? If the keeping of days has been abolished, why are you keeping Sunday as a resurrection day on a regular basis? You should not keep any day. Freedom has been granted from the keeping of all laws and traditions and any customs 
you know, Paul went to church on Sunday. Okay. Uh, if if you believe that uh, freedom has been granted fully from the observance of God's moral law and the observance of any customs of anyone, including Jesus, why are you going to church on Sunday and preaching the, rem the repentance from sin? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> is free now. All you have to say is God, I accept your salvation. You are my rest and you are my salvation and now I will do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. Why should anyone who believes that the Ten Commandments moral law has been abolished continue to go to church every Sunday and then mm -hmm. preach against sin? There is no longer sin. It's all like, you know, of, uh, uh, indulgence, self-indulgence. There is no sin. Yeah, yeah. So on the other hand, if they come back and say, well, you know, it says in the Bible that do not forsaking the assembly of the believers. And I said, well, that's a contradiction then. Yeah. Why you should assemble, <laughs> why should you uh, assemble as believers when you're also preaching that we do not need to assemble on a regular basis? You're self-contradicting. Mm-hmm. You cannot say we should assemble as believers on any one day while at the same time preach that, you know, you should come to church every Sunday because Jesus died and rose on Sunday. That is a custom that has been made after Jesus' death several, you know, who knows, decades or centuries later. The Bible is very clear about commandment keeping as essential to obedience. Mm. By faith, are we saved to obedience. By faith, we are saved. And by obedience, we live. The law itself will not save you, but the lawgiver will save you. But the lawgiver will not save you if you disobey his commandments. Because Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. If the commandments are abolished, which Jesus or who are you worshipping is the question. The first question is uh, to be answered, which is, do you preach repentance from sin? If you preach repentance from sin, you have to define what sin is. Sin is the transgression of the law. That's what is in the Bible. It's not made up by Adventists or anybody else. Mm. So what is that law? If you preach that the law is uh, abolished, what law, uh, you know, what, what is sin then? Mm. Can I lie? Can I uh, fornicate? Can I kill? Can I covet? Can I worship any other God or not worship any other God? Can I God can I take God's name in vain? The third commandment is very clear. Yeah. God does not tolerate or entertain taking his name in vain. That means using some other explanation to worship God and you know that is not in the Bible is not God. It is Godless. <clears throat> uh, some of them were, uh... you have to tell him start with the first word he's talking about the, you know what does it say Let, let's read it again you know when you did not know God you served those which by nature are not God so in the, in the concept of, in the context of serving those other gods they were following the, their own uh, uh, you know customs and they mm -hmm wish to be in the same bondage by keeping months and days and years. You know, do pagans do that? Yes, they do that. It's not only the Christians who keep uh, special days. You can ask them, do you keep Christmas? Do you keep Easter? Do you keep, uh, especially Easter, right? <laughs> Why do you keep Easter? Why do you observe Christmas? Why do you observe Lent? Mm. Ask them, are you observing any special days? Tell me. Mm. If you're observing any special days, then you're going against your own argument. Mm.
if you're keeping every Sunday as a church day, if you're observing all the special days, whether it is uh, Easter, Christmas, Lent, mm. and resurrection, whatnot, then you're arguing against yourself. Self. <laughs> <laughs> contradicting <laughs> how can you contradict yourself and and, and expect that everybody will uh, you know uh, think that you are speaking god's word god's word cannot be contradictory he is not the author of confusion so please resolve that confusion that that contradiction yourself first <laughs> then uh, two of them were referring to uh, the observance of the uh, annual festival, seven annual festi festivals of Jewish Jews uh, as means of salvation uh, in order to be saved or in order to gain righteousness of God. So they were uh, uh, observing the seven festivals of uh, Jewish people and then uh, the annual, uh, the Jubilee years, sabbatical year, and all these things, uh, they were uh, mentioning that Paul may refer to these when he is mentioning uh, days, months, and uh, seasons, and years. Yeah, it, it could also be that. Yeah, yes, and, and definitely it was part of that, which is the ceremonial law was continuing to be observed because Jesus was not accepted as the fulfillment of the prophecy of the Messiah that, that, has, that had come. Mm. So therefore, the Jews, even though they were well-intentioned, mm. they are misled into doing things that were no longer necessary. So Paul had to continuously preach and teach in very strong terms to no longer uh, to, to these Jews uh, who are either partially accepted or probably you know, didn't even accept Jesus uh, or maybe that they want to continue these things. Uh, to, uh, Paul was telling them, you know, you do not need to do this. The fulfillment has happened, which is what the ceremonial laws pointed to. Mm. Jesus himself said, I sent you this verse, where, you know, he, Moses wrote of me, if you don't believe Moses, then, you know, how can you believe me? What did Moses write? Did he only write about uh, sacrifices and sanctuary? No, the very first commandment is about God, the great I am. I am the one who leads you. I'm the one who sustains you. I'm the one who will come and redeem you. And this was predicted for centuries and especially in the book of Torah, especially in you know, Isaiah and, and other books like Psalms, that a Messiah will come who will be sacrificed, not just come as a king and liberate uh, his people from all the you know, Roman bondage. Mm. So they did not accept that. They continued to not accept it. And the um, so-called Jews of today uh, who reject Jesus continue to do the same thing. They still want to find a way to you know, uh, build the third temple and start the sacrifices all over again. This is not going to happen. The Messiah has come and he fulfilled the prophecies. Yeah. Why are you still observing these things? So these people are talking about, you know, observing Jewish uh, festivals and all that for, you can ask them, for what? The fulfillment has happened. Mm. Even some, uh, I would say, Adventists uh, think, uh, not many, but some think that you still have to observe uh, Jewish festivals. Yeah. <laughs> are there Adventists like that? Yeah, I, I came across, you know, some, you know, I don't know if they're truly Adventist in that sense. Uh, they observe uh, Passover and all, huh? At least that's what they said to me. I don't know if they're actually doing it. Uh, uh. One person, he, he, he thinks, uh, you know, the Jewish festivals should still be observed. And, and another lady said that uh, all these 
other commandments uh, found in Leviticus about other things still need to be kept. Besides mm. the commandments. Uh, I heard uh, some Adventists arguing that uh, among these uh, six, uh, seven festivals, six are uh, fulfilled in Jesus Christ, but one is not yet fulfilled. That is the festival of tabernacles. Uh, which symbolizes uh, the new Jerusalem or uh, heaven, heaven and earth, heaven, uh, new earth, new heaven. So it refers to that. So that is not fulfilled yet. So we can observe that and all some Adventists were arguing. Yeah, how do you observe that? For what? <laughs> so you need to go to uh, wilderness live in tabernacles. <laughs> you know, so therefore, uh, you know, any, any, any teaching, any observance, any custom that is not sanctioned in the Bible, mm -hmm. especially after Jesus' fulfillment of the prophecy, is no longer applicable. Mm -hmm. There was another person who came online and said, well, you know, uh, there is this thing called uh, Hebrews, original Hebrews, and all these other Hebrews. And uh, uh, so it goes on and on like that. You know, you start with uh, one false teaching or false understanding, and it will lead you to more false uh, mm -hmm. conclusions. So uh, the law of liberty is what needs to be understood, which is Jesus came to set his people set the world free if they accept him but still there is a law to follow you cannot be free from the law and at the same time think that there is freedom if there is freedom to keep the law then there will be absolute chaos and fighting and what not mm. what we are seeing in, in this great country America is uh, uh, the conflict between the rule of law and the rule of no laws or the rule of lies and liars and looters and, and what not. If there is no law, there will be lying and looting. Yeah. Uh, what is this? Uh, uh, there is no longer Ten Commandments. Just say, you know what? Ten mm. Commandments. If there is no Ten Commandments, then everyone can go and kill themselves, kill kill everybody and lie and loot and you know. So it will it will lead to nothing but chaos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Don't contradict yourself. You know, the country is all the countries are based on the rule of law, not mm. rule of kings and queens and monarchs. And even though it's like that in some countries, uh, you know, it leads to tyranny. Mm. Very good points. Uh, one of them was asking about this. Uh, you desire again to be in bondage. Uh, bondage of uh, observing days and months and seasons and years. Referring to the ceremonial observances. And he was uh, also... Uh, referring to observance of the Ten Commandments uh, as means of salvation. Uh, even that is a bondage uh, he was referring to. Yeah, you can, you can stop them right there and say, okay, does the Ten Commandments talk about, you know, days and years and months? No. It talks about one day. One day. Does it talk about years and months and other observance, you know? Mm. No, so let's not read into that. It only talks about one day going to public worship. Mm. Like, you know, you are doing on Sunday. If you are mm. doing that, you're contradict. If, if, if you're against going to church on any one day on a regular basis, you're contradicting yourself. Why are you going to church on any one day? Mm. And secondly, you can say, you know, you can ask him, do you, do you go to church, you know, every Sunday? Yes. Mm. Why are you doing that? Mm. Because you're contrary, you know, if you're against keeping the Sabbath, why are you keeping Sunday on a regular basis? 
freedom is set everyone free now supposedly mm-hmm. from keeping any days why are you keeping that day you <laughs> you you do not want to keep a day that god has ordained as a public day of rest and worship but then you know you want to keep sunday then at the same time you are arguing against yourself to not keep so why why can't you be consistent and secondly you can say do you observe years do you count years do you count months do you do you count weeks do you observe easter do you observe christmas do you do all these things these are meant to be markers in time milestones in time yeah what the context that is being talked about in that particular verses is you know the in the context of uh, some uh, worship that was continued or uh, being cont- uh, you know uh, by 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 those who rejected jesus or maybe they they accepted jesus but they still don't want to give up those things mm-hmm. so you have to be very clear why are you doing that and again uh, speaking against doing that yeah if you observe years and months and days you know as a marking time not as a part of worship you know, worshiping the moon god or sun god or you know after all these week days are ma- uh, named after roman gods yeah so do we mean we are really worshiping sun and moon and thor and all that no you know this has become part of the culture so what paul is talking about is worshiping all these various deities because children of israel the children of israel had this custom of worshiping idols baal astaroth molech <laughs> so mm. in worship they had to have days mm. and who knows months or yearly whatever they had their own alternate worship days and events that were going on in the worship of mm. idols that's the context the tenth commandment doesn't have anything about years and months and days except one day of course uh, but that day is only dedicated to god not any idol is not for self worship mm. in the end what matters is if you are willing to follow god rather than your own teachings and your own god or your own whatever mm. uh were these uh, jews and gentiles uh were they uh were they having this custom of uh, worshiping heathen gods and goddesses and observing those days and months and uh, years yeah if if anyone reads uh, uh, kings first kings and second kings mm only dedicated to talking about all this worship of uh, gods which are not the real god mm and then chronic various kings turned away you know some some uh turned to god but at the same time worshiping you know uh, both god and the idols uh and at the same uh, or uh, worshiping different idols completely forsaking and completely uh you know worshiping idols you know the the kings the books of kings mention all the uh stories incidents of kings of israel and judah leading you know <laughs> the chosen to worship uh, gods and goddesses or you know all the, and then along with that all these various days that go along with that yeah yeah paul is basically referring to that maybe yeah he's referring to that plus Mm. per se i don't know if it's all about uh, worshiping idols but they made their own uh, set of uh 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 tradition rules more mm. rules, like what uh, ravi was saying more rules than what was required right? and still adhering to those rules in the worship of yahweh mm and still clinging on to all the various uh, ceremonial laws and customs after jesus uh, came and fulfilled all mm. so shall we go to ephesians second chapter yes so what is in ephesians second chapter 
uh, Ephesians uh, second chapter 14 to 16. Ephesians 14. Uh, Ephesians 2, uh, 14 to 16. 2, 14 to 16. It says, and I'm reading from the King James Version. Mm. Verse number 4, uh, 14. For mm. he is our peace, who hath made both one, and had broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Mm. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, <clears throat> contained in ordinances, for to make in himself or twain one new man, mm. so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. So what is the question? The question that they ask is uh, the wall of separation uh, between God and man. Actually, that's not the context, but uh, they uh, read into it and then ask uh, that the wall of separation between God and man is the law of commandments. Uh, referring to the Ten Commandments and both Ten Commandments and the ceremonial law. Uh, so Christ, uh, when he died on the cross, he abolished that. Uh, the law of God and the ceremonial law of Moses. Both of them he abolished and uh, he made peace now. And he reconciled uh, uh, human beings with God, uh, putting to death the enmity. Uh, caused by sin. So that is what they understand, but uh, the context is not that. The context is between the enmity between Gentiles and Jews, is it? Yeah, let's read, uh, you know, uh, number 15, verse number 15. Mm -hmm. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in where? Ordinances. <laughs> so there were many ordinances which are uh, of uh, the ceremonial law. Mm. Uh, that you, you have to do like this, you have to do like that. You, have to, you know, it, it was basically uh, a kind of observance that was not, you know, uh, uh, leading to peace, so to speak, even though the, the God himself ordained that to happen. So it is saying uh, the law of commandments contained in ordinances. Mm. So if you are not going to make a distinction between the Ten Commandments moral law and the mm. ceremonial law, and you think that there is no longer you know, a law to keep, the question is, why are you going to church on Sunday? Mm. Why are you preaching, uh, you know, repentance from sin? If there's no longer any law now, and we have been uh, set free from the keeping of any moral law, let mm. alone the ceremonial law that pointed to Christ's uh, death and crucifixion, uh, crucifixion and death, then uh, there is no church to go to. Yeah. I should be able to lie and steal and uh, fornicate and you know do everything. Mm. And then it is in direct contradiction to what Jesus said that if you love me, keep my commandments. So use that in in a, a, and a, in the same uh, what should I say uh, uh, juxtaposition to come uh, you know to to read the other words, which is Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And here Jesus is. Uh, supposedly saying that, well, you don't need to keep the commandments. So how can these two be true at the same time? Mm. You can say, you know, Jesus said, keep my commandments. Even in Matthew 5, he's saying, you know, you, 
your righteousness should exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees. And he, he clearly says, think not that I have come to abolish the law. Hmm. So, you know, if Jesus very clearly said, think not that I have not come, think not that I have come to abolish the law, what law was he talking about? And then, hmm. of course, they might say, well, you know, he, he fulfilled the law. Therefore, we do not have to uh, observe it or fulfill it. If that's the case, then explain why Jesus said, if you allow me, keep my commandments. Which commandments? And if they say, well, love God and love your neighbor. But I thought we, he, th those were just abolished. And those are based on the Ten Commandments anyway. Not on the ceremonial law. The ceremonial law was actually the result of breaking God's first commandment, which is do not eat. Do not do that which I told you not to do. And because of the breaking of that particular commandment, then now we have ten commandments. So, so, so as the okay. So, if you think that the law of commandments referred to the ten commandments, Jesus also said, "If you love me, keep my commandments." There's a big contradiction there. Yeah. So, how do you explain the contradiction? Then, if they say, "Well, it's the two main laws." Well, those two main laws are in the Old Testament too. Mm. Loving God and loving your neighbor, it came from the Old Testament. It didn't suddenly come in the New Testament. The whole point of the law, moral law, is to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. And when Jesus said that I will write my laws in, in your heart, and which means that uh, you do not just merely keep this as a ceremonial observance, uh, as an exterior external thing, but that it is truly within you, that you will truly worship God, you know, based on your, based on the conviction of your heart, that you will truly love your neighbor based on the conviction of your heart, which means mind, that you're convinced about that this is the right way to follow and not just do it for the sake of doing. Yeah. <clears throat> About this uh, enmity between uh, in the church of Eph Ephesus, there were uh, many Jews, Jewish converts and the Gentile converts. And the Jewish people, uh, they, since they have the ceremonial law, since they have the Ten Commandments law, since they have the prophets, uh, since they have uh, uh, circumcision, and uh, promises concerning circumcision, the covenant. <clears throat> uh, so they are the special people, covenant people. So they built a wall uh, of superiority and uh, built a wall of pride and prejudice between them and uh, Gentiles. Uh, so uh, uh, is Paul, uh, referring here that uh, Christ uh, came to came and died for both Gentiles and Jews uh, same in the same manner uh, so that uh, he destroyed the, the wall of racism and the wall of uh, pride and uh, prejudice and hostility it's a wall of separation uh, so it's a wall of enmity between Gentiles and Jews. So the Jewish people, actually, they need to be thankful and humble and loving. But they treated uh, their Gentile believers as dogs, slaves, and some of them called them as uh, wood for the hellfire. And when uh, anybody married uh, a Gentile girl, both of them, they... Uh, they left the boy and burnt the girl, Gentile girl, alive. And they never allowed them into the sanctuary. Uh, they, they wanted to a certain extent they allowed. So Christ came to make the peace uh, between them and all. So is Paul referring to this kind of a wall? Or is he referring to the external observances of the ceremonial law? Uh, 
that uh, Christ broke and caused the thing. Uh, so Christ breaking the dividing wall of uh, separation. So uh, yeah, I, uh, I would say it could include all of those things because if it is in if the if the practice of faith any kind mm. of in contradiction to loving God and loving your neighbor as yourself and giving yourself for your neighbor, uh, mm. no matter who that neighbor is, then of course that, that is uh, called enmity. And I mean, it's like uh, that is included, that meaning. And uh, remember again, who are the Jews? According to the New Testament, you can say the Jews are not those who are of the flesh. Mm. The Jews are those who forsake idolatry. That's a you know spiritual. It's a it's a symbolic term. It's not a, a term for uh, any kind of uh, you know uh, DNA you know, based on uh, flesh. First of all, but still you know those who consider themselves Jews overall even they are not correct because they you know the Jews are originally. Uh, uh, from the tribe of Judah, uh, so-called, and and so uh, all the tribes have been mixed and scattered. So there's no real Jews even during Christ's time. Uh, the Jews were all kind of scattered and then mixed up with other ethnicities or tribes or whatever. So, but but still, this this concept of Jewishness, as though it is a physical thing, continues even till this day, mm. which is wrong. First of all, you know, we need to get that, uh, you know, that uh, that problem resolved. Who is a Jew? Mm. We're talking about Jews and Gentiles, but who is a Jew? One who renounces identity. Yeah. Mm. So who is that? Anybody. It can be anyone. So the in reality, mm. not Jew or Gentile. all are Gentiles, actually. You know. So, but mm. let's uh, from the Bible. Why, why <laughs> interpret something that is uh, of our own doing? Let's see what the Bible says. Okay. Uh, Ephesians chapter number two. It mm. starts from verse number eight. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the mm. gift of God. Mm. That means by grace you are yeah. saved. That means it is by God's favor that you are saved only through faith. Mm. If there's no faith, faith means what? By faith, you are saved. That means the just shall live by faith. That means those who are willing to follow the faith. The meaning of faith also means those who uh, have uh, or to have confidence in one thing or a person. That means if you have confidence in God, who has shown his favor to you, then you need to do what God says, which is to keep his commandments. Commandment mm. number one, worship God with all your, you know, worship God. So by grace, by favor, are you saved through faith? That means through the, the body of instruction that God has given, because we cannot see God. It's not just simply agreeing to what God has said, but to actually do. It, you know what God says and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God that means the grace that has been given did not come about because of yourself mm. God has created you you have fallen because of Adam God has given the way of salvation so it is God's doing but God's doing is based on a set of rules and regulations there is no escape from that And, when, mm. and, and therefore, when you do those things, okay, which is to have faith, which is to do that which is right. Faith means doing that which is right. Righteous means doing the right thing. Then you will be saved. The right thing is to depend on God, give credit to God. Don't come with your own rules and regulations and your own observances. Don't be after the God. So therefore, that is faith. Don't take credit. Don't try to go and show yourself as though you're better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. The publican and the Pharisee. The Pharisee prayed in the, in, and said, God, look at me how great I am. 
you know, look at the sinner. No, do not take credit for your works. Okay, so let's go down. Not of works lest any man should boast. Now what works are, you know, uh, is, is Paul talking about? Those works that man may want to boast about. Mm. <clears throat> it's not saying don't do any works. It's, it's saying do not boast about any, uh, uh, anything about anything that you want to boast about. As though you, you know, are a better person or you, it's all about you. Or it's because of your works you are saved. Mm -hmm. God working through you to do the works that will save you. Okay, so let's go. So is that clear? Not of works. The Sabbath is not of whose works? Those works that you will boast about. Mm. Or that you may want to feel proud about. Of mm. heritage or your acts or whatever. Okay. And so, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Mm. So is there a contradiction between number 9 and 10? We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Good works. Mm. Which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Faith without works is dead. So number 9 talks about works that man may want to boast about whether it is good or bad you know whatever it is and then in 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 contradiction to number 10 for we are his workmanship we are created in, you know because of god even though we're in a fallen state created in christ jesus unto good works even before there was a fall we were created for good and good mm -hmm. For his glory. God's glory is seen in man if he does good works. Not two ways about it. You, you tell them to read there. It says for what? Good works. How can the good works be defined as? Which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you keep the commandments, they'll be good. No commandments, they'll be evil. Lying is not good. Okay, let's go further. Is that clear, therefore, uh, so far? Yeah, yeah. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh. Who are the Jews? Gentiles. Yeah, it is. Hmm. We studied this before. We discussed about this before, that... All the nations of the world were at one time considered Gentiles. They all came mm. from the Gentile uh, tribes of Noah, Abraham mm. and Japheth. These are all mm -hmm. Gentile nations. You know, it's, 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 it's there somewhere in uh, Genesis. You can type Gentile nations in the electronic Bible and, and read that which is shown in, in Genesis. So here it says... <laughs> You are in time past Gentiles in the flesh <laughs> who are called uncircumcision, uncircumcision, but that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Mm. Abraham was asked to, you know, uh, as a sign uh, of faithfulness, he was asked to, uh, you know, circumcise. It was not an easy thing at all. It was a painful experience. Okay, mm. so Abraham was Gentile. Even though he came from Shem, he, he you know, uh, he was in the Hamitic land of Babylon. Then he was told to go to Canaan. Canaan is also another descendant of Ham. All the Edomites, Jebusites, they're all the descendants of Ham. Mm -hmm. And so God picked up one person from one, you know, uh, one tribe or one son, Shem. But they're all fallen beings. But he picked out one person who, who was showing uh, in his own life that based on the light he received, he wanted to worship the one true God, right? Mm -hmm. And so, okay, that, so is that clear so far? Here it is very clearly saying, tell them, please read what is before and after. 
read the entire chapter if needed okay mm -hmm. but here it is lemma 11 who in times past you were gentiles in the flesh so yeah. there is no jew or gentile all are one in jesus christ all are fallen mm. number 12 that at that time ye were without christ being aliens from the commonwealth of israel and mm. strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without god in the world is he talking about actual gentiles or jews If you read from the very beginning, it seems like, you know, he's talking about uh, Jews, unless I'm mistaken, you know, you, you can correct me. Yeah, yeah. But even he's, then, he's yeah. addressing the Jewish uh, people because of their superiority, pride and prejudice. They are the ones uh, who created this wall of controversy and hostility. That, that you, know, you know, us and them. Mm. Is the us and them still going on today? The controversy between us, the elect, the select, the enlightened, uh, you know, the saved, and those who are not yeah. saved, and those who are not elect and select. Yeah, yeah. Controversy is yeah. still going on. <laughs> the basis of discrimination. Discrimination, racism. Racism and bigotry. Bigotry. Yeah. That in America right now, you know, we are uh, uh, of one, you know, uh, kind of race white or whatever <laughs> and mm. we have every right to rule or we are christians mm. we take to others as to what they should believe mm. they will not practice their own beliefs but they want others to practice mm. you can see that in politics today it's way it has had very destructive consequences there's no doubt about it the us and them Mm. Jesus came yeah. to, you know, remove the partition between this us and them kind of feeling. Mm. Everyone is adopted into the commonwealth of Israel. Who are Israel? Though, you know, Israel is actually the term given by who to who? Jacob. God gave, you know, one who fights and succeeds or something like that, right? Israel. Mm. God gave the term. It is God's name that was given as a symbol to mean something symbolic yeah to jacob who was a cheater who who, who cheated and stole from a uh, birthright from his uh, uh, from his brother okay mm. or he's in the business of saving gentiles those who have fallen god mm. is not in the business of keeping Everyone separate in their own camps and blessing, you know, everyone in their own camps. God wants everyone to go out, share the blessings, mix with everyone, scatter around the whole world. Don't build a tower for yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. So therefore, uh, what what else is you know talking about here? But now, okay. So did we understand number twelve? Yeah, yeah. You are Understood. alien from the Commonwealth of Israel. Who is Israel? There was no Israel, you know, to, to begin with. The, the mm. commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. What is a promise? Having mm. no hope. Mm. Without God in the world. When you're without God in the world, you engage in cheating and lying and killing and stealing and all these things. Mm. You worship God, the true God. So it is through the commonwealth of Israel. That means through... God's intervention in one person who at least was showing, you know, faithfulness or, uh, or wanting to fight against God himself, you know, uh, that God renamed that whole tribe as Israel. Mm. Otherwise, they're actually Jacobites. Mm. Yeah. And strangers from the covenant of the, what is the promise? That God will save you from your sins. And to yeah, use the whole world. Yeah. Not only save you uh, and your tribe and your race, and then, then you can boast about how great God is, and the Messiah will come just for you. And then God will, uh, and this so called Messiah they're still waiting for, will uh, attract everyone to 
uh, I don't know what, uh, to, to look at Jerusalem or what? I don't know. It's, it's very hard to understand that, uh, uh, you know, they're thinking in, in this regard. The, the whole concept of Israel is the promise of salvation to all mankind. John 3, 16. Mm -hmm. How can there be salvation from sin if that sin will continue, which is a transgression of God's law? The salvation mm -hmm. is from, you know, transgressing God's law. God's law is God's nature, God himself. So what is salvation? Is a question that needs to be asked, which is salvation is about being saved from sin. Mm. Not in sin. Not uh, like, you know, from keeping the law. Was salvation based on keeping, you know, from, from keeping the law? What kind of salvation is that? Then in that case, everyone should be saved and will be saved. No one should go to hell. Because mm. they believe that, you know, if you sin and do not accept Jesus, you will go to hell immediately after you die. Then you can ask them, that's a contradiction because there is no sin according to your own interpretation. If there's no law, there is no sin. If there is no law, for example, to a country, there is no violation of the law. Mm -hmm. if, if there's no law saying that I should drive on the right side of uh, the road and then uh, if I go on the left side, then I should not be punished. If I cross the red light, then I should not be punished because let's say there's no, uh, you know, uh, law stating that I, I cannot cross the red light. You can you can tell anyone the number one problem with the, the whole world right now it, it is the breakdown, the disorder. The uh, it, it's all uh, based on the rule of no laws. <clears throat> yeah, a violation of laws. You know, mm -hmm. police go and arrest anyone for anything if there are no laws. Mm -hmm. Freedom is not free. Freedom is based on the rule of law. Mm. So, you, uh, so what else? So, is that clear? Number twelve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so very clear. Based on you know a certain you know with, well, conditions and you know uh, and uh, uh, what should I say? Or obedience to those conditions. God clearly say, said, or rather, you know. In, in the book of Kings, especially, that if you obey me, then your kingdom will prosper. But if you disobey me, I will scatter you and I will remember you no more, including the kingdom of Judah. There's a very clear uh, you know, text about that. Even though Jesus came out of the lineage, lineage of the kingdom of Judah, there you will find in, 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 in Kings, mm -hmm. the book mm -hmm. of Kings, that if you disobey me, I will scatter you, I will forget you, I will remember you no more. Because of the disobedience to God's moral law, not ceremonial law, moral law. Mm. The moral law is the only place where it says how to worship. Yeah. How to worship. Mm -hmm. The ceremonial law is, the, is complementary to upholding God's moral law. Mm. The ceremonial law was meant to show what happens when there is sin and you know disobedience to God's law, which is which results in death and discord and sin and sickness and all that, which is uh, which was constantly reminded by the sacrifice this in, uh, of these innocent animals day after day to to teach them a lesson, children of Israel, to teach them a lesson that these are the consequences of breaking God's law. Yeah, but someone had to take the place. In fact, God Himself had to take the place of sacrificing. You know, or, or, or the consequence of sin, which is that consequence of sin is death. God took that place to simply, you know, uh, what should I say? Teach the lesson that <sighs> man has been given this great. Uh, what it is an awesome responsibility with the uh, with the what should I say with the ability to make a choice between good and bad. It started in heaven, good and bad. You know, when you don't obey God, when you don't worship God willfully, and you're doing something else, that is sin. That is disobeying 
in in contradicting in in contradiction to God's order. Mm-hmm. So is that clear now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's go to the next verse. Uh, let's see here. So verse who are the, the covenant of promise, having no hope, and without God? Without God means what in the world? Lawlessness, fighting Lawless. and and killing and you know doing what you want you know mm-hmm. that is without god without god what what, what is what happens you, you can ask them without god what do you think is with the result mm-hmm. and how do you know we you know what it means to be without god that means without his laws mm. you think, you know, okay let's go but now in christ jesus you know but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. So mm-hmm. who are these people? For now in Christ Jesus. Yeah, he's referring to both Jews and Gentiles. Far off from, it is everybody. Everybody. Mm. John 3, 16. So by the price of the blood of Christ, made peace for he is our peace who had made both one who had <laughs> who had made both one who Christ made all humanity with Godhead with with with, with the creator also right mm-hmm. and had broken down the middle wall of partition between us that means between us and God because the previous mm-hmm. verse says that we were alienated because and we are far off uh, because we were without God in the world, you know, that is number 12. And then the solution is, but in Christ Jesus, you know, be, you know, because of his sacrifice and blood, which was constantly being pointed to in the ceremonial law before Christ came. So he became our peace so that we no longer have to be at enmity with God or with each other. So those two points again come there. Mm-hmm. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity. That means... The enmity has been abolished by a person called God who revealed himself as Jesus. Only a person can guarantee salvation, not just a set of laws. Set of laws are there to point to Jesus Christ or the God that has revealed himself. In fact, Jesus said, you know, Moses wrote about me. And at one other place, it says, you know, uh, the Jews wanted to uh, stone him to death because he claimed to be God or greater than Abraham or something like that. Okay, and, and and so he said, "Before Abraham, I am." So the I am that revealed to Moses who he was is Jesus Himself. Hmm. I am the Lord God. I am, you know. The one who rescued, uh, who, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. That's all I'm Jesus. Man. The I am, who is later on known as Yahweh, who is mm-hmm. later known as Lord, Lord God. Okay. So, number 16, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were nigh to you and also to them that were nigh. That means who are also equally ignorant. Yeah, yeah. But through him we have both access by one spirit unto the Father. Mm -hmm. So here he's talking about one spirit unto the Father. The Holy Spirit is a God. Or by himself. Mm. Okay. So unto the Father. Here he you know, clearly talks about Jesus, God the Son, God the Spirit, and God the Father. Now yeah. therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. <laughs> yeah. So the only way to become fellow citizens with the saints 
of the household of God is how? If you accept Jesus, the blood, the, 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 the sacrifice that was offered, which the Jews, so-called, are refusing to accept, even till mm. this day. Many have accepted. Many Gentiles also don't accept. Not all Gentiles accept. Mm. And some of the Gentiles uh, you know, are also with this uh, uh, erroneous teaching, unfortunately, that there is uh, one track of salvation to the Jews and another to the Gentiles. While the Bible very clearly, especially in this you know, uh, verse, Ephesians uh, 2, in this chapter, talks about who are the Gentiles. All are Gentiles. All are Gentiles, yeah. It's very clearly, you know, put there, and Jesus came to make peace with those who have lost their way through his blood. Mm -hmm. And then here it talks about, you know, the Spirit and the Father. And, and number 19, Ephesians 2, 19. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners. Okay, we read just that. Uh, you're the, uh, the house. But, and uh, number 20, sorry. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Mm. So what is the foundation of the apostles and prophets? Jesus Christ. Mm. Yeah, because he's the one who revealed himself to the 12, you know, disciples and apostles. Mm. And, and, and Paul was called to be an apostle, sent from God, sent from Jesus. Uh, and so number 21, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. Mm. So this temple is actually what? It's not a really a physical temple. Mm. It says somewhere that you are the church. You are the temple of the living God. Mm. The four wall temple or church is there to facilitate the actual, you know, spiritual temple or church, yeah. which is everybody who accepts Jesus Christ mm -hmm. or God and, and, and his method of salvation. Mm. Number 22, Ephesians 2 22, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God. Through the spirit. Mm. So again, the spirit, God the Father, God the Son, are being very clearly referred to in Ephesians 2. Yeah. And the mm. purpose of that, for God to have it, and if God has it, is to save. Salvation mm. from sin, from transgressing God's moral law. If there is no moral law, you have immorality. Yeah. That's what's happening. Greed and lying and all that, it's all called immoral. There's a, there's a reason why there's something called moral and immoral. And some something has to be referred to to decide what is moral and immoral. What is right, what is wrong. Mm. If there is no objective way to you know figure out what is right and wrong, then uh, everything is either right or everything is just wrong. Mm. You know, it'll all be like uh, you know, like uh, Darwin, what he what he's what he said, which is the survival of the fittest. Yeah, yeah. So does it uh, make sense? That's fine. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh... Here, Paul is uh, speaking about uh, Christ who made the peace as the only solution for both uh, Jews and Gentiles. And the warfare and the violence, aggression, racism, pride, prejudice, hatred that's going on between uh, uh, Gentiles and Jews. Or uh, many that they really, everyone is a Gentile. You know, first of all, we should tell them who is a Jew. Mm. First of all, there is no pure physical Jew. Forget all of that. It's all mixed up. So he is very clearly talking about the enmity between God and man. And, and between man he also, of course. Mm. So Christ uh, broke the dividing wall uh, between uh, uh, 
between the people and made peace, made them all as a family of God. And uh, they are all living stones in the temple of God, both Gentiles and Jews or whatever the people, black or white or uh, anyone. Yeah, no, no artificial difference. God does not look at appearances. Artificial differences of all this. But uh, the Jewish controversies, uh, their superiority, because they have the covenants, they have the law, ceremonial law, the moral law, prophets, and uh, circumcision covenants, the promises of covenants. And without uh, understanding them, without uh, having the inner experience, of all those promises, uh, simply by performing some outward, uh, outward uh, uh, observing the outward works of uh, the ceremonial law, the moral law, uh, they felt that they were very superior to the rest of the people in the world. They built a wall around them, the wall of separation. And uh, they were never at peace with uh, anybody else outside of them. They kept all this knowledge to themselves, kept all salvage, knowledge of salvation to themselves, knowledge of Messiah to themselves, and uh, felt very superior. And then Paul was so burdened by all that in this uh, chapter, as you have explained step by step, verse by verse. And then uh, he offered himself as a sacrifice on the cross Christ and his atoning sacrifice broke all those uh, barriers between people and uh, made them as one family with the Father. And they're all at peace with the Father uh, and uh, as family of God, as a temple of uh, God. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, that's what it is. In, in in one sentence or in a brief summary, the whole point of reconciliation is mm. to be saved from transgressing God's law. Yeah, yeah. Jesus said, again, you have to say that, you know, if we cannot see Jesus, we cannot follow Jesus as in, you know, physical way. Uh, the only way we can understand Jesus and God and everything is to follow his instructions yeah yeah allow me keep my commandments and it also says that you know many will say god god but they have you know uh, but they have not followed my will what is god's will that we are no longer under the under the um, captivity of transgressing god's law hmm. so if we what is the point of jesus uh, you know paying the price so that we can do what we want. No. If that's the case, then you know, please don't preach to me sin and uh, salvation. If we are all saved. I, I accept that He, God, will save me, and then I, I can now do what I want. No, it's the whole mm. context of that Ephesians two is, you know, salvation, and 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 uh, from what to what, and and by who. Mm. And therefore, there is no longer enmity. If we accept the blood of Jesus Christ, if we accept Jesus, there is no longer enmity. There should no longer be any division mm -hmm. or feeling of exclusion or feeling of superiority between any human beings. Mm -hmm. We are all the same. No longer Jew or Gentile. How many times they should, you know, we should, uh, you know, know this or be reminded there's no longer Jew or Gentile. There is only one group of people which are sinners saved by God's grace. No Greek, no Scythian, no barbarian, nobody. We are all the same in, in, in Jesus because, first of all, we're all mixed up when, when it comes to races and ethnicities and all that. So you can't even say who's purely what. We are not saved by ethnicity or race or uh, uh, some orthodoxy or tradition that somebody gave and, and that church. No. We are saved through Jesus Christ's blood 
if we accept him yeah. directly and spirit to <clears throat> dwell in us. And yeah, if yeah. spirit to dwell, you cannot be engaged in doing wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the greatest uh, misunderstanding of our Sunday pastors uh, on this verse 15 uh, that uh, God abolished uh, in the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross the law of commandments. Uh, so they say that uh, Christ has uh, nullified the law, the Ten Commandment law. And uh, not no, no, I mean, Paul here is referring to the ceremonial law with all its uh, ordinances and the rituals because they are fulfilled in Christ Jesus. In Christ, uh, when he's offered on the cross, they are fulfilled. So he abolished that law uh, of uh, commandments contained in ordinances. Uh, so that's the one without understanding this context. Uh, they say simply, God, they, Christ abolished the law of commandments, means he abolished the Ten Commandment law. That's what they feel. But uh, when we actually explain to them, as you explained uh, in this context, in, I mean, in the context of the entire chapter, uh, I think they should be able to clearly understand that uh, Paul is here referring to the ceremonial observances, uh, the observance of the ceremonial laws, the rituals and the sacrifices, uh, circumcision and all that. Uh, they were that, using as means of salvation. Yeah, that preceded Christ. Crucifixion. Yeah, yeah. Christ abolished that. I mean, uh, abolished those uh, ceremonial laws. Yeah, you, you, can, you can say again, you know, Jesus Christ said, you know, if you love me, keep my commandments. So it, there is a big uh, contradiction if you think he also abolished the Ten Commandments. Mm. <laughs> you can say if, if God abolished the Ten Commandments, then no Christmas, no Easter, no Sunday, no Monday, everything is whatever you want it to be, no years, no months. Right? Yeah, yeah. You can go to work any day you want, and your employer should not fire you. If your employer says come from, you know, come on Monday, you can go on Wednesday because you're free. You're set free by, you know, sorry to say this, you're set free by God's, you know, uh, grace and sacrifice of Jesus. Now you are a free agent, not a free moral agent. You are a free agent and you can do what you want. There are no penalties, no consequences. Everything is just fine. Mm. Is that what you're talking about? You can ask them, what, yeah. what kind of Christianity is that? That doesn't sound like Christianity. <laughs> it, sound, it doesn't sound like Christ following. It's like you're following your own self. Mm -hmm. Your ideas and your thoughts. It, that's not what Christianity is. Christianity is very clearly based on the scriptures. Yeah. What are the scriptures? Written word of God. If there is nothing to follow, why do we have the Bible? Yeah. All you say is just thank you, God. For the freedom now I experience, and you you can just do what you want. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, uh, you refer to that uh, God is actually addressing all human beings here who are separated uh, by sin, uh, and the sin is a wall between God and man. And Christ, uh, through His atoning sacrifice, He broke that wall. And then now, uh, both the, all the human beings, including Jews and Gentiles, uh, they were all reconciled to God. And they are now at peace only through his blood and cross and atoning sacrifice of the Lord Jesus. 
and then in Romans 12 chapter 12 16 to 18 he says in Christ all human beings who are saved are at peace with God and uh, Second Corinthians 5.20, he says that uh, we are all ambassadors of reconciliation, uh, being reconciled by the glory of the Prince of Peace, Ephesians 1, 7 to 10. So it's a great message of peace and reconciliation and uh, salvation through grace, through faith and through obedience by faith and grace uh, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and it gives us great hope in this. Uh, and there is no difference at all about the abolishing of the Ten Commandment law here <laughs> in this chapter. Yeah, the, the chapter talks about, you know, the enmity that came about because of sin which is the transgression of God's law law mm. so he offered the price for this transgression of God's law so that we can be recreated workmanship unto good works yeah we, we read in Galatians you know we are saved and you know how can, how can the wall of separation be removed as long as there is sin? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Transgression of God's law. So unless we are in active participation, actively mm -hmm. not engaged in transgressing God's law, that means there has to be a law somewhere. Mm -hmm. Reference point. Yeah. Unless so, that is there, they, they will never be peace. What peace is there? There will be only strife and fighting and killing and all these things, which is mm. exactly what the devil wants. So mm. God's standard is very clear. And that standard is known by his scriptures. And his scriptures can be summarized as love God and love you know each other. And with the Ten Commandments, no Ten Commandments, all you will have is more uh, lawlessness and confusion. Yeah, yeah. It'll be, uh, they tell them, it'll be uh, like Darwin's theory of evolution. Uh, and I hope you will evolve, ultimately. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a great human being. So or don't by, you think, yeah. don't you think that through this chapter, uh, God is so powerfully speaking to the modern world especially in USA and Europe about this racism and then caste system in India uh, and all the caste uh, system. Uh, God regards this as a crime. It's the greatest crime of uh, making these barriers between human beings and the community groups like blacks and whites and uh, uh, rich and poor and uh, east and west and language and region and all all these pity pity barriers that human beings themselves uh, erected just like the jewish people in the world uh, they erected uh, a bar a wall of separation between them and the gentiles and uh, god is so hurt and uh, Paul was hurt even after a preaching of the gospel. Uh, they still have this uh, racism, feeling of superiority, prejudice, hostility, and arrogance, that pride, and all that. So the cross of Jesus and his sacrifice should destroy every aspect of that thoroughly, and nothing should be there. Once we have that, uh, uh, can we be the children of God? Or can we prepare ourselves to be in God's kingdom? Uh, or be saved in his kingdom and his coming? So... Uh, yeah, 
mean, yeah, that is what it's it's all about, you know, the two principles, you know, the golden rule. Mm, golden rule, yeah. Treat others like yourself. Mm -hmm. What happens, racism and bigotry in any form is a sin against self, as I say, because everyone else has been created in the image of God, even though they may mm. have fallen and lost or least is that God came to you know save man from the consequences of sin from the penalty of sin and also the consequence of sin mm -hmm. the penalty and the punishment yeah God did not seem to uh, come to <laughs> Uh, what did I say? You know, remove his own laws. If he mm -hmm. removes his own laws, then there's, there shouldn't be any penalty or uh, you know or punishment. Yeah, yeah. Consequence. Sorry, yeah. So it's a uh, it's as clear as it can be. You know. Yeah. <laughs> freedom through the blood of Christ, but freedom to no longer be in transgression. Mm -hmm. Every person has been given the opportunity and the ability to not transgress God's law. Yeah. So, uh, would you mind uh, uh, doing some study on Romans 7, 1 to 6 and uh, Romans 3, 20 to 21 uh, next time, next Sunday? Yeah, we'll do that next next time. Uh, that is Romans 7, 1 to 6. Many questions uh, from our Sunday passes are coming on this portion. Okay. Uh, the analogy of marriage there, uh, the victory over sin, and the obedience to the law of God, and all that. And the Romans 3, 22, 21, Romans 3, 20 to 21. So those yeah, two, we'll that, uh, next week, yeah. two verses, yeah. Now it's already 10.30 past here. Okay. Night. Yeah. So thank you very much, uh, Anand. Yeah, you're welcome. Very clear, uh, very simple, pointed explanation of uh, this chapter, uh, Ephesians 2. I didn't uh, study this in the context of the whole chapter. Now that you came from the beginning, <laughs> it's very clear. Yeah. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, it's very clear, difficult, but uh, when we study in context, in the principles that you uh, followed, principles of interpretation of the Bible, uh, the, the content is very clear there. Eh? Content and context. So, context. I know what he comes with one single verse and tries to make a doctrine out of that. Mm -hmm. You can tell them, let's uh, start with, uh, you know, the beginning and then go towards the end. And <laughs> then, Enjoyed uh, discussion and fellowship with you, Anand, this time. Uh, I do. And then uh, we are going to share all this uh, with the... Uh, Many of our Sunday pastors during this week, coming week, uh, our Bible study and Zoom classes and all. Uh, so, uh, very helpful now in uh, uh, making my understanding, broadening my horizons of understanding, uh, making us mature in the knowledge of. Uh, some of these difficult passages of Paul. Uh, by those uh, basic underlying principles that you laid, I think uh, any portion should be very simple, uh, should be understood clearly, plainly. Uh, that's a broad understanding. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a great weekend. Yeah, yeah. 
kindly remember my brother who is still in hospital. Okay. He's a little better now. Okay. My mother also, and then uh, there are uh, some of our Sunday pastors who are suffering from COVID, and uh, some of them are suffering from fevers now, viral fevers all over, all over because of rainy season, and uh, uh, some of them are uh, having problems with uh, heart problems and uh, BP. sugar problems paralysis some of them are paralyzed during this lockdown because of stress i think mm -hmm. so kindly remember them in your prayer. i think i'll send those names yeah to you email uh you can remember them in your prayers yeah okay so let's close with uh prayer yeah the lord heavenly father creator of all things we thank you for the opportunity to discuss and fellowship and study your word that has been given at this time a lot we remember all those precious souls that are suffering in so many different ways about i pray for the uh, Elisha Rao's brother and, and his mother, I lift them up to your throne of grace for healing. You are the great physician. And all these uh, precious uh, souls, the pastors, who are suffering in so many different ways. Alone. It is hard to understand where to go, how to go about resolving all these issues that are coming about because of this unknown virus that is spreading worldwide without mercy lord heal us heal these people that are struggling in so many different ways heal them a lot because only you can do it nobody else can <clears throat> our first to know your love and and your mercy and your grace that you have given freely and that you have promised just like It says in the scriptures, "Look up unto me, and I will give you rest." So I pray for the rest and restoration of all these people that uh, Brother Elisha Rao has mentioned. And so, Lord, we pray that somehow you will even bless uh, this country, which is suffering greatly, America. There's so much division and strife. among believers and non believers you know that we are all one when it comes to who we are we are all sinners come short we are come short of your glory so show us your mercy on us show us your grace at this time of need go with us as we part now continue to help us find ways to share your share the faith that has been given so that this work can come to an end and that we can be saved forever to be with you but I ask all this blessings in jesus name amen 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 thank you so much anand thank you this is a special time for me yes a special time with you i look forward to this throughout the week <laughs> thank you <laughs> it's a, it's also a help a blessing to me and uh being able to reflect and study again what we take yeah. for granted and so it is a blessing overall you know so that we <laughs> can share this uh, this living water right yeah yeah <laughs> okay. okay enjoyed your fellowship love you miss you so much thank you we too okay bye 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 have a nice day thank you mm.